not too long ago, I read an article about the new Range Rover Velar, and someone called it an off-road and a tuxedo. And I think they were spot on as far as their description of it, because it looks very pretty, but it also has the capabilities off the beaten path. And I'm here at Land Rover of Sarasota, and today I'm going to be able to take in a complete tour of this brand new 2025 Range Rover Velar. The trim we have is a P250 SE Dynamic, and I'm going to take in a complete tour, starting with the exterior, interior technology engine, and of course the test drive. So if you like watching videos like this, don't forget to check out the rest of my channel, hit that like and subscribe button. Now let's get back to this. Here's a fun fact about Range Rover Velar. It was first introduced in 1969. Yes, the Velar was a cover name for the first Range Rover prototype. And uh, then fast forward many, many years till 2017, Range Rover reintroduces Velar into the lineup. And here's what we have in 2025. Now I've done a video of a 2020 Range Rover Velar four years ago. And I really like that. It serves a certain purpose. So Land Rover, Range Rover, uh, let's talk about this really quick. So Land Rover is the mother brand of the company. And we still have like the Land Rover Discovery, Discovery Sport. We have the Land Rover Defender. Those are more of the off road year vehicles they serve a purpose you know you can take it off the beaten path and they're not as expensive as the range rover now range rover is the luxurious brand of a within that a land rover name and, and they make a very pretty cars but lo and behold they still are very capable off the beaten path not that many people are gonna do it do any of the off-roading or even take it off the pavement for that matter uh, but if they needed to they can actually handle themselves very well let's take a look at the design of this vehicle first of all if you like the color they call it the arroyo gray and i really like this especially with a combination of all of the black trim pieces range rover of course spelled out right on top of the hood we have the piano black grill and here's the green land rover logo on the side big lights led daytime running lights turn signals and led lights again right here everything is encased in this piano black looking very sharp we have the air curtains on the side this is open allowing more air to help with cooling off the engines by the way we have two different powertrain options for this vehicle let's take a look at one of them and the base engine on the Velar is this two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine 247 horsepower 269 pound feet of torque made it to an eight speed automatic transmission it's an all-wheel drive with intelligent driveline dynamics and the average gas mileage is 23. now it's not the most powerful thing out there if you need more power there's also available the p400 series which got inline six cylinder engine with about 400 horsepower so if power is your thing you might opt in for that more powerful engine as far as the rest of the setup here we have the hood strut some sound insulation and the double latch right up front looking at this vehicle you wouldn't think that this can handle itself off the road but it's got a pretty good ground clearance it's got a really good all-wheel drive system the ground clearance is over eight inches 8.4 inches looking pretty right now on top of the hood we have this two trim pieces one on each side they serve no purpose but to look good range rover spelled out in here as far as the wheel and tires this one has been upgraded with 20 inch wheels we have 255 by 50 is the tire size and this is the pirelli scorpion zero so definitely not an off-road tires kind of you know old terrain tire if you will we have another black trim piece on the side and this vehicle has actually the contrast top package which the roof and the pillars have been painted in the piano black color we have the panoramic sunroof door handles that pop up from the doors the bottom of the vehicle is also dressed in the piano black look at this 
press the button right here as long as you have the key somewhere on you the door handles will pop from the doors now it's set up to do it only on the driver door we can change that in settings to make sure that all the doors open once you do that now if we go around the corner you see a really nice light so the tail lights start actually right on the side, nicely wrapping around the back and they're connected in this piano black trim Range Rover spelled out. And here we have the rear view camera down here at the bottom, the wipers nicely hidden underneath that uh, gate spoiler. And we have the third brake light there as well. Velar on one side, everything at the bottom is piano black, no visible exhaust. Well, let's pop this gate open and see how much room we have inside. The typical Range Rover remote, power gate, we have a bunch of goodies. Let me get those out. I'll show you what's what's inside. And here it is. We have plenty of space right here in the back. This one has the cargo cover underneath here. Let's see what we have. Yes, we do have a temporary spare tire. Big plus for many people. We have the electrical outlet, 12 volt outlet, and then the speakers right here in the back. This vehicle is equipped with the Meridian stereo. We also have the cargo cover and if you need more room you can simply fold down the seats you can see they fold down it's 40 20 or 60 40 split or 40 20 40 if you wanted to because this middle pass through opens by itself as well and that creates a lot more room for cargo now let's see what we have for passengers so starting with this rear door panel what we have is window and lock controls we also have this neoprene style material here this is all nice and soft as well we have two speakers one top one at the bottom and the seats are covered in this ebony leather which is basically a black color leather right here in the middle you see the armrest that folds open pretty cool feature here are the two usb type c ports for your charging for your devices if you wanted to definitely comfortable for two people the third person probably not so much because it has this huge bump right here in the middle but then you have your own controls for the heating and ventilating system you have your own vents right here and both seats have some seat back storage now looking up you can see this big panoramic sunroof you also have the handles and illumination for the interior let's see if i can fit inside the front seat is adjusted to my regular driving position. I'm almost six feet tall. Let's see if I fit. Hey, I do. Now I'm almost touching my knees to the back of uh, this seat. I can probably compromise a little bit and get it moved a little bit forward uh, and not be touching, but this is not bad at all. I have uh, this much room above my head. That's about two inches, two and a half inches. Uh, plenty of shoulder room. If two people are sitting in the back seat, the seats are firmer, but comfortable well, and of course before we go inside let's listen to the sound of the closing door boom and as always Range Rover does not disappoint with the quality here now as far as the front door panel we have the same type of material as we've seen in the back we have an additional speaker so there's a tweeter and two speakers here and then we have the window mirror lock controls three member seat settings a little bit more storage down here at the bottom Range Rover on the door sill the seats nice like I said, firmer, but comfortable and supportive. And we have the power adjustments for both the driver and passenger seats, including the lumbar support. Now it's got brand new technology on the interior. Uh, let's get inside and find out what it is. And here's the interior of this 2025 Land Rover Velar. It's very stylish. It's very elegant. Uh, right here, you have this softer material. I believe this is neoprene. That's what the diving suits are made of. It's waterproof, it should be at least. Um, so there's a little bit of piano black trim. Of course, the vents on the side. This is also softer with the speaker in the middle head up display. Very elegant steering wheel. Now it's a leather wrap. I, I, I kind of wish it was a little bit thicker for my taste. Uh, lots of piano black here. Not a big fan of it. Lots of fingerprints could be seen here probably. Uh, but this is functional. We have a lot of functions in here that includes the controls for the instrument cluster, phone, media, voice control, safety features. Now on this side, you have the adaptive cruise control, heated steering wheel, etc. Over here, you have the pedal shifter. So it has the manual mode as well. And we have the fully digital instrument cluster. Let's see what's going on here. Right now, we have this traditional two dial styling on the right hand side, tachometer, left hand side, speedometer. In the middle, I selected a clock, but there's other functions that are available. Let's see, info panels. So you can select what's going on on the info panel right here. If you don't like the clock, you can leave it blank. 
Uh, we can set the navigation for it, radio, etc. I'm going to select the radio for now. And you can select different functions, display layout, for example. You can go with the two dial, one dial, map, media, drivers, assistance. Uh, let's get out of here and go back to other settings. We have can adjust the head-up display settings and the vehicle settings as well. So a little bit of customization here. It's not as robust as I'd say either BMW or Mercedes-Benz and the newer models. They're very robust systems with the MBUX and the new BMW system, but it is functional. And right here, we have this PV Pro. We've seen it on other models before. I absolutely love those screens. And I know I've mentioned that before. I like the shape of them. They're kind of curved and uh, there's not much glare on it. They're looking really, really good. I also like the coloring on it, kind of like the Sophia one. It's very easy to read. And overall, the system is very much functional. So here we have some shortcuts. Okay, so I can go through here with the media, slope assist. You can connect the phone, uh, navigation. This particular one doesn't have the navigation. It needs the USB drive to get the files from it. You know, as far as the phone, it's probably going to look for my phone. Hopefully, it's not going to disconnect it. We're just going to turn it off. Uh, but you have the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, media, AM, FM, Sirius XM. You have the off-road pages. As you can see, the 4x4 info gives you the pitch and roll, altitude and bearing. It also shows you whether the center diff is locked or not. If you are encountering water, the maximum weighting depth is 1 foot 9 inches or in meters is half a meter, essentially 55 centimeters. Let's go back to feet. Uh, we have the different trail modes, grass, gravel, mud ruts and sand. Go back to this main screen again, compass, wheel info, weight sensing, energy impact, driving style. So these are the shortcuts, but the main features are here. So you press this little icon button. So we have navigation, accounts, seats. Here's what we can do with the seats. Right now, I have mine ventilated. Okay. And I can, that's a three sta stage ventilation, three stage heating. There's no massage seat option on this particular one. Uh, go back. Now we have the Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, of course, Eco Data 4x4, low traction launch vehicle dimensions. Just in case I didn't mention that, let's see what those vehicles are. And here we are in, so 15 feet and 9 inches is the total length of this vehicle. Uh, look at the approach and departure angles. They're actually decent for how low this bumper hangs. 23.6, 25 in the back. 19.1 is the uh, breakover angle. Eight inches right here, you know, as far as the clearance underneath. And then seven foot and one inch. So that's 85 inches from end of the mirror to end of the mirror. 5.6. So that's the height of the vehicle. Not bad at all. Uh, in case you are wondering what these are, you can always look them up. So voice media, phone, air quality, driver's assistance, cabin lighting. Does it have the ambient lights? Yep, it has the ambient lights. However, um, because we are here during the day, I can't see anywhere where those lights are. I suspect that at night it's going to be more visible. We're going to go to home screen here. Back to this main screen. Let's put it in reverse and let's see how the rear view camera looks like. So we have the 360 really good quality here. Active trajectory lines here that show up also on the top view camera and you can select several different angles. Okay, very important, especially if you are off-roading. This is an off-road feature here as well. This is the rear camera. I believe we can also go to the front camera once I go through here. There you go. Select the camera from here, and now we can see the front view. Now we can also see the vehicle from the outside. Different angles, really nice, good quality. And here's your 3D mode again. We have the parking assist. So drive forward to find parking spaces. Behind to 
hard to do on this lawn that I'm parked in, but it has that feature available. So this is your infotainment system down here. You have USB type C and a little bit of a shelf, but not big enough to put the phones in. Unfortunately, uh, we have the shifter. This is the electronic shifter, you know, but it works just like on the other Range Rovers that we've seen, push the button, pull it towards you. If you pull it twice, it goes to the sport mode, you know, go all the way back, goes to reverse, press P to park. This is nice, not very shiny. However, the outside is, and we have two cup holders, of course, and we can open this glove box or this thing right here, console. You see a little bit more storage, Sirius XM, discover what you love. I believe there's a trial period that you get with it. Uh, up here on the mirror, have the home link system and you have the sunroof control. Let's get this shade open first. Pretty decent sized sunroof. Look at this. This panel goes all the way back and you can also slide it open allowing tons more air inside the cabin. Of course, we have the windscreen here. And this is basically what you have on the interior of this vehicle. One more thing to check out is the visors. They're illuminated and you have additional speakers. By the way, the Meridian stereo on this vehicle sounds really good. I wish I could present it to you, but due to YouTube copyright issues, we can't. So let's talk about pricing and take it for a spin. As far as pricing, the Range Rover Velar sits right above Range Rover Evoque and below the Range Rover Sport. And then, of course, the top of the lineup is the full-size Range Rover. So it is competing in the compact SUV segment and with vehicles such as BMW X3, Porsche Macan, Mercedes-Benz GLC, or some people even throw in the Genesis GV. 70 in the mix. So the Range Rover Velar S, which is the base trim level, starts at 61,500. The SE starts at 63.6. The Dynamic HSC 78.4. And, and we have the SE with the Dynamic package with a, quite a few options that I'm going to list in the description of this video. This vehicle lists at just $74,000. 74 is a lot considering it's a compact SUV segment. Uh, let's see if the drive will justify the price. Now here in this parking lot right here, I'm on the lawn and yeah, this is not an off-road by any means. And of course we have the 20 inch rims, but I just wanted how this vehicle handles. And this is about as much off-road, maybe not even that as some of the Rand Rover owners will give it while driving to the restaurants or stores or just about going about their day. So, I mean, this vehicle will most likely not see any of the trails at all. But if it did, you know, it is fairly capable. It feels good on the lawn here. And let's take it on the road. But before we get on the road itself, you know, I here have a little bit of room here. Let's turn the steering wheel all the way to the left and see how it's going to turn. It actually turns. Good. It's built off the same chassis as the Discovery. It feels good driving. We'll see how it's going to accelerate, how it can merge and traffic, because that's really what the important part about the acceleration is within vehicles like this. And yes, there are performance versions. You, of course, can get the, the performance GLC or the uh, X3M. Uh, so getting merging in traffic is not bad. It doesn't have a very rapid acceleration. I'm going to try it out from the stop, uh, but it can definitely hold its own. It's nice and quiet. There's very little noise coming into the cabin, and that's both from the engine and from the tires. There's almost no tire noise. So the cabin is very well insulated as far as that. And it feels good. It feels very comfortable. 
you sit up even though the vehicle is not huge but you have this very good visibility off the road the big windshield the mirrors are good size the steering wheel could be a little bit thicker but i think i mentioned that before already that's just my personal preference a lot of people would either not even notice that at all or wouldn't care well here we're at the stop sign yeah, let's go We got it about 55 miles per hour not bad if you need more power go for the p400 series and uh, that is the 395 horsepower uh, i'm going to try to bring it on the channel as well just to compare it and see for myself of how big of a difference it makes but i think the difference is going to be huge so let's talk about the segment we have the glc x3 q5 we have the gv70 porsche macan a lot of competitors, a lot of great vehicles in the market. Like I mentioned before, someone even throw in the, the GV70, the Genesis, the brand new luxury brand. Although, you know, some people don't consider it a luxury brand yet. Great vehicles though, and much less expensive. So it is a great vehicle. It's great looking. It's got nice technology as far as the power. It's the same about as the basic GLC. I think the basic GLC has got 255 horsepower. So very comparable to that, uh, but it is more expensive, you know, starting at 61.5, this one 74,000, you can probably go for like the GLC 43, something that's more sportier with that. So the looks of it though, I got to give it to them. I mean, that's probably the best looking compact SUV on the market right now. So definitely if you're looking for a compact luxury SUV, don't forget to check out the Range Rover Velar. I think it's a very strong competitor in the segment and everybody's got different needs. So definitely check it out. And if you're anywhere in uh, Florida, check out the guys over at Land Rover of Sarasota. Yes, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned one or two things about this brand new Velar. And if you did, don't forget to check out the rest of my channel, hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in my next video. Cheers.